Has it been five months since I talked about Mill Creek's Ultraman releases? That doesn't seem right. That's because Mill Creek hasn't released anything in five months. That does explain it. Ah, uh, we got some Ultraman to catch up on. Four new releases, two I didn't talk about before, and the possibility of more in the future? Are they good? Are they bad? What kind of dangers and peril await us? We must find out. After the credits. It's Morphin Time! So I didn't miss anything. There was just, like, no Ultraman for five months, even though Mill Creek's been pumping them out, like, two a month for... They just... They took five months off. Yeah, that's what I said. Five months? No releases? It's weird. Huh. Oh, hello, this is Sad Out here. I hope you guys like my new intern, Belly Rock. I hope he doesn't cause us any trouble. We're talking about Mill Creek Ultraman again. I have been somewhat to say... A little, maybe sometimes too much, critical of the Mill Creek Ultraman releases. What can I say? I'm a fan and I want these things to be the best they can be. And, well, maybe it's turned out pretty good. You haven't seen the previous videos, there's a playlist for them, but... Yeah, the maybe a set I was worried about. It was going to be 50 episodes and 4 movies on 6 discs, and it turned out good. I don't, I don't understand it still. I just pop a maybe a disc in and it's like... A beautiful picture quality that I did not expect out of that much content on that many discs. The movies were a little shaky, but the show was pretty solid. So, going forward, I'm like, I guess we're doing things in DVD, and I guess they know how to compress DVDs. So, on that note, we're not going to talk about DVDs. In fact, I kind of missed a couple releases. Uh, they came out in 2021. I mentioned them, but I didn't really follow up on them. And I bought them back in July... Imagining I would be talking about Zayearth, or Neos, or Cosmos, or Nexus prior to October, November 2022, but things got delayed. We'll talk about that in a moment, but let's talk about Ultraman Zero the Chronicle, which I was actually quite wrong about, and the secrets of the birth of Ultraman. All right, so the first thing we're looking at today is Ultraman Zero the Chronicle. I wanted to clear the air about this release because... Well, to be honest, when I covered this before in the Tiga Dina Gaia video, The Revenge of TDG, I didn't give it a fair shake. I didn't own the release, and I basically just went off Amazon reviews that was complaining about episodes being out of order, and you know what? I'm going to be honest, this release is definitely worse than that. I, the review is not kind, and I still am not too happy with this, but I wanted to clear the air on some of it, because now that I own it, uh, mostly for getting it for like less than $10, it's not a bad set. It's just weirdly redundant. So Ultraman Zero The Chronicle, for those that are unaware, is a compilation series. They do the Chronicle series every year to fill the time slot between Ultraman shows, because the shows only run half a year. That way the time slot doesn't go away for Ultraman, and we don't have a situation like what happened with Cosmos and Nexus. More on that later. Now, of course, they previously did release the Ultraman Zero stuff in two previous sets. While this was Mega Monster Battle themed, Ultraman Zero did debut in Mega Monster Battle Ultra Galaxy the Movie. And then there's this other set that contained the Zero side specials and other movies. Now, if you want the complete Zero experience, you get these two sets. You'll have the original formats of the movies. Now, unfortunately, there was a side special called Ultra Zero Fight, which the only way to watch it officially on Mill Creek's releases is through the Ultraman Zero Chronicle, which is also not ideal because the Ultra Zero Fight is cut down for this version. So, the thing is that this is not a fault of Mill Creek so much as Super I didn't give them the original Ultra Zero fight, because I assume if they did, it would have just been a bonus disc included in this set, much like how Ultra Fight Victory or Ultra Fight Orb was included in their sets. But let's talk about this on its own merits. So, one of the complaints that came up was that this set contained episodes out of order. Well, the thing is, the original Zero Chronicle airing was out of order. They didn't do the chronological order of how they appear in the original formats, but just did some kind of weird screwy order. So it's not Mill Creek's fault. The other thing that's interesting about the set uh, is it's the only Ultraman set so far of the modern era that's not a steelbook to have discs stacked on top of each other. I could do a whole video about how this is one of my biggest pet peeves is when you have to pull discs on top of each other. I would prefer if it's going to have to happen, happen with the Blu-ray and not a DVD because the lack of, uh, you know, scratch protection on DVDs makes would make this a nightmare. But at least for a Blu-ray, it's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Now, here's the fun part. So the actual uh, 
Zero Chronicle on its original airing in Japan was 26 episodes. Then the re-airing was 25 episodes. So this actually is the original version because there is 26 episodes. However, you're going to notice a problem when we look at the discs. So disc one says episodes one through eight. That is correct. Disc two says episodes nine through 15, which is not correct. It's only nine through 14. Then disc three, of course, says 16 to 23 when it's actually 15 through 22. And then disc four is 23 to 26, and it says 24 to 27. I think those were the initial confusion as to which version this was, if it was the original or re-air, because 27 doesn't match anything else. And there is, in fact, not 27 episodes. It's 26. So I want anyone to know that if they're going into getting this set, which, again, is the only way to watch Ultra Zero Fight, and there is some extra stuff in here. Like, there's some episodes that have some new footage. Uh, it's just a weird set because the only Chronicle series we seem to be getting. Uh, and at this point, it's like we'll release all of them and not just one. But if you are looking for it, it is the original Ultra Zero Chronicle, so the episodes being out of order is just the way that Subaraya did it. And also, it's 26 episodes, not 27. One last thing, on the back here, it does mention uh, video 1080p, which is sort of correct, it's actually 1080i, but minor difference. Audio Japanese, English dubs, Ultraman Zero, Revenge of Belly, Ultraman Saga. What? That's because, for whatever reason, the, um, the actual readout block here is an exact copy of the Mega Monster Battle, or the uh, Ultraman Zero set, I mean. So yeah, uh, that's kind of a screw up. And unfortunately, uh, this is something that's happened twice because the, um, the Rube set says subtitles English movie Japanese English dub, which is incorrect. There isn't a Rube movie dub. And it's because they accidentally copied it straight from X, which I think was released in the same month or close to it. Um, so weird little thing aside. Uh, Ultra Ran Zero the Chronicle, not a high recommended release, but if you're a completionist, I guess it's okay. So another catch-up release from July 10th, 2021, is The Secrets of the Rise of Ultraman Blu-ray. This is not something that I think most people even really acknowledge. Uh, this is a follow-up to the previous The Birth of Ultraman Blu-ray. Uh, these were both exclusive to the uh, U.S. retailer Deep Discount. Uh, it was part of a deal with Mill Creek, because Deep Discount is carrying their stuff. The Birth of Ultraman set is this pretty much bare-bones, here's a disc, and it contains these episodes of the original Ultraman in the English dub, with the Japanese version also included, so it's dual audio. And then it has the Birth of Ultraman pre-premiere uh, special, which was a TV special that happened prior to Ultraman airing. And it's uh, kind of a neat little thing they, they dug up uh, after they'd done the original Blu-ray set. And this basically talks about, you know, some of that stuff. It's some of the excerpts from the Ultraman set. And then, of course, the cover art is the first issue of The Rise of Ultraman, which is the Marvel comic that has been coming out. Here's the first trade volume. So you can see that it's supposed to tie in to the release of the Marvel comic, as well as including that special. Now, the Secrets of the Rise of Ultraman is not as exciting, I think, as a package, because while it does contain more English-dubbed episodes, different than the ones on the first set, uh, those are the ones there that it contains, the big draw factor is the Secrets of the Rise of Ultraman bonus feature, which was put together by Starlight Runner, who is the marketing team for Ultraman in the West. And they, and so this has got some of the similar booklet stuff. But The Secrets of the Rise of Ultraman was something that Jeff Gomez and Starlight Runner put together. They're wonderful, they do such a great job, and they are one of the reasons why we have such an expansive use of Ultraman in the West, um, or at least in the US, Canada. I know they're working to expand beyond that. But these people right here are a lot of the people involved with bringing Ultraman to you. And so they made a, a special feature, essentially, for the Rise of Ultraman comic, talking about some of the bonuses and secrets and Easter eggs within it. And so it's kind of neat. Uh, it is the anchor for the set. The rest of it is just more dubbed episodes. So not a total necessity for a lot of people, but it's something I did want to pick up at some point, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, it's kind of weird. These are little, like, side pieces to have some more of those episodes. I'm just assuming the reason why we don't have an entire dub set is because they can't get the master audio correct for some of them. But anyways, between these two, uh, you have some of the dubbed episodes and then some of the bonus things like The Birth of Ultraman and then that Secrets special. How could you forget two releases? What are you, an idiot? Come on. Yes, I forgot. It happens. I'm sorry. I gotta get back to the video. Yeah, you should be sorry. 
So anyways, now that we got our catch-up out of the way, let's talk about what came out recently. So while originally there was a schedule that was kind of nutty, where like there was a bunch of stuff dropping all at once, between July, August, September, we were supposed to get like Zayarth, Neos, Cosmos, Nexus, Max, like all in like a three month span. And Ultraman Kids, almost forgot about that one. There was six releases scheduled to come out between three months and none of that stuck. The July releases slipped to September, slipped to October, other releases slipped here and there. So essentially nothing came out when it was originally put up on Amazon. Um, yeah, and Mill Creek officially announced the delay of only one of them, which was Ultraman Max. So essentially, let me run down where we're standing. We have Ultraman Zayarth, originally a July release, later became an October 11th release, released the same day as Ultraman Neos, which was originally, I think, an August release or September release. Both of these came out October 11th. Cosmos was supposed to be October 11th as well, and that slipped to November 1st at the last minute, which happens. And then Nexus was supposed to be September or October, it became November 15th, along with Ultraman Max, which Max fell off the schedule, and then Mill Creek said it's not coming till January. And then Ultraman Kids was supposed to be in July, along with Zayearth, and that got pushed to December. So, yeah, uh, we got four of the six releases here. I didn't feel like waiting for kids to talk about Nexus, because I love this show. It's my favorite Ultraman show. So these releases have all come out in basically like a single month. We got four releases. And I wanted to kind of talk about why I think we suddenly just got like, boom, we're finishing up the contract. Because essentially what we're looking at here is that with these four releases, plus kids and Max, this is the end of the initial contract from everything I can tell. Because when the contract was signed for Mill Creek, and when this contract was signed for them to be streaming on Shout Factory's Toku Shoutsu, there was a list of shows put into the press release. And a list of movies as well. And that list included everything Mill Creek had released so far, plus stuff they hadn't released. It did not include things like Tiga Final Odyssey, which was not on the Mill Creek release. But it also didn't include things like Ultraman Kids, which did get a Mill Creek release. So it's a little weird, but essentially, we've covered everything that was on that original contract, at least with Toku Shoutsu. I was slightly concerned when seeing all six of these releases trying to come out, like, in huge chunks between originally July and October, which eventually became October through January. I was worried Mill Creek's license was running out and they were trying to get it all out before it was done. Max is coming out in January. I hope that means that they have a 2023 and beyond contract. I think these have been selling incredibly well. When something goes on sale, as well as the fact that it hits high sales charts, says to me that these are doing well, especially at the price. These still can't be beat. I mean, Nexus here was like $24. It's really amazing for a whole show and a movie. So when it comes down to it, I think that we're not worried about the end of Mill Creek Ultraman, but they might have been trying to get through the initial contract, and hopefully they signed a new contract that allows them access to more titles. Specifically titles such as Ultraman Taiga, Ultraman Zet, Ultraman Trigger, which are the three shows that have finished after Ultraman Rue, which is the furthest out we've gotten release-wise. And hopefully other things such as Ultraman Great, Ultraman Powered, Ultraman USA, uh, Ultra Q Dark Fantasy. Those are all things that are kind of in limbo due to international rights, especially Great Powered in USA because those were co-productions. But maybe some of that stuff might clear up and we could see more releases. There's a bunch of show of compilation movies as well. I could go into a whole list of what's missing, but I'll kind of save that for the next time. There's definitely more Ultraman to release, and just because we're at the end of the initial part of it doesn't mean it should be slowing down. But it might be slowing down because, yeah, I think Mill Creek may have tried to push a little too fast, and disc replicators, which are the things that actually produce discs, because they take a disc that's been produced, they produce it over and over again. Case shortages have absolutely been a thing hitting the industry, and in general, it just takes a long time to manufacture and ship stuff when it didn't before. So while Mill Creek may have been able to do this, like, two releases a month thing, in the original days, this year it's been a little more chaotic and it just didn't seem to happen. I mean, they were a little nuts to put out, you know, these two sets in one month because this is an eight disc set, here that eight, and this is a six disc set. That's, uh, that's 14 discs in one month. That's a lot for any company. So honestly, I think that the reason why the schedule was shifting was they were trying to get it all done as quick as possible so they could move on to some new stuff, hopefully. And then they also ended up uh, just having to shift the schedule because actual circumstances came up. They're, even their reasoning for Max being delayed was circumstances beyond our control. So on that note, I think what's important to note is that the Mill Creek releases are still going. 
it doesn't seem like they're stopping, and we have no reason to worry about them ending after Max. So hopefully we get announcements after Max to see more things like Taiga, Zet, Trigger, and others. But on that note, of course, what we do here is we take a look at the releases, their packaging, and because they're DVDs, I can do screenshots, the video quality. Let's talk about the four new releases that have come out in the last month. So here we have Ultraman Zay Earth. For those unaware, Ultraman Zay Earth was a pair of films, one that came out before Tiga, which was Zay Earth, and one that came out during Tiga, which is Zay Earth 2. Tiga was a very serious Ultraman show, all things considered. This was a slapstick comedy slash parody slash, like, oh my gosh, it's goofy pair of movies. And the thing is, is that Zay Earth, I think, has been one of those kind of forgotten ultras of the 90s. Uh, like, him, great powered nice they all hang out in this wow people don't remember us but we're gonna keep showing up like he was just in an ultra galaxy fight so zay earth i think there's a reason to release these movies unfortunately i think this is the single worst release mill creek's done for ultraman uh all right let's talk about the packaging i think the cover art's great it's got the monster from the first movie the dark zay earth from the second movie uh spine art you can see it's got the logos for both movies there which i do appreciate it's a double feature on the back you got your usual kind of text blocks um, you know, here's Zay Earth, Zay Earth 2. Really nice imagery. Uh, if you want to see a clear snapshot production still of the movie, there's that. And there is that. And that is the best look at Zay Earth you will get in this video. Uh, these are Japanese. There's no English dub. I know there is an English dub, but they don't have it on here, probably for licensing reasons. And let's pop the case. Boom, there it is. So these are two movies on one disc, but considering the, the runtime of both movies together is less than two hours, this is totally fine. Releasing a two hour or two and a half hour movie even on a DVD is fine. So putting out two movies on this is fine. I don't think the problem with this release is Mill Creek's release of it. I think putting them on one DVD is fine. I don't know what masters they got for this uh, because, well, it doesn't look great. Last thing before we talk about that, you'll notice it's a black case. So all the previous DVDs and all the future DVDs for these releases, clear cases, because they have interior art. We'll look at Neos in a minute, but they have clear cases. So this is going to stand out like a sore thumb. And then also, because it's not a clear case, there isn't any interior art, which it doesn't need to have, but I'm just showing that it wasn't intended to have a clear case. They intended it to have a black case, it seems. Uh, I know case shortages have been a problem uh, for like the whole year for all media companies, but it's kind of a bummer that this doesn't look like it matches any of the sets. Now, let's talk about the quality because, um, mm, not great. So the first screenshot I wanted to share was just the title card that shows the logos for the companies involved, and it's really blurry, which is not a great sign, but how does the movie look itself? Huh. Yeah, it's, um, how do I describe it? Incredibly fuzzy all the way throughout. Eh, scrolling through this movie and trying to find screenshots was tough because I wanted to make sure it showed a clear image or at least a still frame, and this is one of them. And you're probably like, oh, is that just the dark scenes? Nope, the daylight scenes too. Uh, everything just looks completely fuzzy and blurred out, and it just doesn't look great. I don't know if this is a source issue or what, but uh, honestly, it just really looks bad, and I don't know how else to put it besides it looks really bad. So releasing the same day as Zayarth was Ultraman Neos. Now this set fares better quality-wise. First of all, I do love the cover with Neos and Ultra 721 here. Looks really great. Love the swirly fire effect. And of course, the spine art is also pretty good. I like how it does wrap around the background to the spine, the Neos logo, and Neos himself there. Now this show was a direct-to-video series, so this was released... God, was it released on VHS tapes? Um, it's hard to find information on some of these shows like Neos. Cool shot of Neos and 2-1 there. You know, bio. Opening it up, you got uh, what is a very nice case design because it's got a little tab flipper for uh, the disc. I thought it'd be one disc here, one disc there. But the little flipper is nice. You can see that you do have the episode guide printed on the inside of the case, uh, which makes the clear case really worth it. This is only a 12-episode show, so I was never worried about it when they announced it as a DVD because you can get a 12-episode show on a DVD pretty good. Um, overall, like... It's not too bad of a release. The show previously was aired on Toku HD, so that's probably where the subtitles came from. And they're not bad. Having watched uh, a few minutes of it, I think the subs are pretty good, um, all things considered, and pretty much on par with the other Mill Creek Ultraman releases. But how is the picture quality? Let's look at some screenshots. So looking at Neos, here's a shot that's part effect shot, part, you know, live shot. Uh, you can also see the subtitles. 
this is essentially just kind of like to give you an idea of how the quality is. And honestly, I think it looks good. This is a show from 2000 that doesn't have a proper HD master. The series did receive a Blu-ray in Japan, but as far as I know, it's an upscale, which this could be the same video source. Uh, it definitely looks pretty good overall, especially in scenes in the base like this one. Effect shots like Neos's rise here also look pretty sharp. There is some fuzziness just to the nature of its being SD video, but it actually doesn't look too bad overall. And honestly, just looking at the set in general, it sort of looks better than the Tiga, Dinah, and Gaia sets, which those are older shows, sure, but they just seem to look a little bit better overall. All right, here's the big boy, released on November 1st, 2022, Ultraman Cosmos. Now, I was talking in my previous videos about how I was worried about this set, especially with some of the compression problems on Tiga, Dinah, and Gaia, um, which honestly aren't as bad as I thought they were in practice, but still not great. Uh, I was really worried about Cosmos because it did seem like all the Ultraman sets were stuck to six discs only. And maybe it's turned out good uh, with its, you know, 10 episodes per disc somehow. A whole video on Mabius. I was worried Cosmos would be crammed into six discs. Why would that be an issue? Cosmos is 65 episodes in three movies. Luckily, boom, we're talking eight discs in this set. Excellent stuff. Now, before we crack it open, let's talk about, you know, the outer, the outer art. I think that while we've not been getting slipcovers, I haven't been mentioning this because what's the point? Uh, after Mabius, slipcovers have just gone away. It's a bummer. But I got to say, the cover art is still incredible, and it is eye-catching. So if it's going to be no slipcover, at least the cover art looks good. I love the shot of Cosmos' main forms here, all the logos for the movies on the bottom. I love the spine art, with the, uh, especially with the way the logo is done with this gradient effect. Really cool. And you got, you know, Cosmos there. And I like that they have this consistency of wrapping around the spine, because uh, Neos did that as well. So on the back, what's really cool is it lists everything in the chronological order. So you had the first Cosmos movie, the first Contact, then Cosmos the series, then Cosmos 2, and Cosmos vs. Justice. I like this because while the movies are going to be on their own disc, this gives you a continuity readout. And I really think that should be on almost all the releases, especially like Mabius had its uh, specials all out of order on its disc. This is 30 hours and 39 minutes of runtime. So yeah, let's take a look at it. First things first, let's pull this out of the way. The uh, inner case uh, artwork, you know, features a kaiju on the back on one side and then Cosmos on the front for the other side. And then the spine has got the Cosmos logo it matches up to the inner cases of Tiga, Dinah, Gaia. So I like that they've given us this option with some of these sets to uh, essentially switch them if we want to switch them, uh, if, depending on which side of the cases you want to display. Now, there is about nine episodes per disc, uh, which is what I kind of predicted it would have to be. So we got, you know, one through nine, 10 through 18, 19 through 27, 28 through 36, uh, 37 to 45 there. Uh, 46 to 55, and then over here it is 56 to 65. So about nine episodes per disc, pretty good. And then the movies, and they just call them specials, but they are full movies. Uh, they're all on the last disc. What's also nice is unlike some of the cases like Gaia, this eight disc case is like really sturdy and I haven't had any discs falling out. It also does come with a booklet, which is always nice to see from the main series. Um, so we got, of course, Cosmos and his forms, support crew stuff for Team Eyes, uh, the episode list, which understandably doesn't have any pictures because uh, that's a lot of episodes. And then there isn't a page about the movies on here, uh, which there normally is. And that's probably because, um, well, it's on the back of the box. It's not too bad. But yeah, overall, this is a great looking set from the outside. But how is it on the actual picture quality? Are we concerned that there is too much compression? Let's take a look and find out. All right, let's talk the quality of Cosmos' episodes. You can see in a brighter shot like this that the image is pretty sharp. It's not quite maybe a level of sharp, but it's honestly looking really good for being a nine episodes on a DVD, probably due to the higher capacity DVDs that maybe is used. Even shots inside motion like this, I caught this as an in-between frame in movement, which I think is a good indicator of how good the quality is on this. It actually looks really, really good. And then also shots of Ultraman fighting and protecting things. 
also look really good. Some of these shots get a little fuzzier on some releases, and it just depends episode to episode, but this turned out pretty nice. As for the movies, they also look good. Despite there being three movies on one disc, it doesn't seem to have hurt them too badly. Especially shots like these, which have some VFX work going on, they still look pretty good, and it's not like anything's getting like overly artifact or ghosting. In fact, the Ultraman Cosmos vs. Justice movie I think looks even better than anything else in the disc and has some really nice shots. Like this example of a shot here that's definitely a darker scene because the movie is overall lit differently than the other Cosmos movies, but it looks really good and you can see the depth of detail and not anything is getting washed out in the image. Same goes for a shot like this where you can have the light on one side, the darkness on the other, Colors aren't blending and mixing together. There's clean crispness to each person standing there, and I think that is actually pretty impressive, considering how much is on each DVD. In our most recent release, November 15th, Ultraman Nexus. Now, this is my favorite Ultraman show. It is no surprise that I would be most excited for this one over any of the others, and I also think it's one of the better ones that we've gotten. So here we have Ultraman Nexus. I love the logos on the side, so it doesn't interrupt the image. we got Nexus Amphorans, Junus Blue, and Junus. It also includes Ultraman the Next, which is really good, and we'll talk about that in a moment here. I love that the spine art has the same art from the front, but it's got Amphorus, Junus Blue, and Junus here, because having those three uh, really represents some of the themes of Nexus, which I think is great. Now, Nexus is a different kind of Ultraman show. They essentially thought they were going to get an adult time slot, because with the previous series like Tiga, Dina, Gaia, and Cosmos, it was airing in primetime. But Cosmos was more kid-focused and a lot more lighthearted, and so when the network had the chance, they swapped it out for another show, which I think was Gundam Seed Destiny, and Nexus got kicked to a kid slot, even though it was totally tailored to that primetime, more adult spot. In this show, you get more of the mature storytelling, more nuanced stuff. It is less kid-friendly than other Ultraman shows, but it's not to say that a kid couldn't watch it. It did air in a kid's time slot. It's not like it has anything that egregious, but it does take a darker turn in a lot of ways but what I think is more interesting in more nuanced ways. Now, what's really cool is that there was a movie produced, Ultraman the Next, which actually takes place prior to Nexus. So despite being packed as the last disc in the set, Next is a prequel to Nexus. While this doesn't seem to necessarily connect immediately, the show does tie all this together. And that's why I'm really glad this came as a set uh, of show. So of course, on the inside here, we've got our booklet. So the alternate cover on the back would have Ultraman the Next, while on the front would have Ultraman Nexus uh, Junus, as well as Dark Mephisto. So you've got the spine there. So if you wanted to flip the cover, that's your option. Disc-wise, I do think it's kind of a bummer that they only use the Amphorans photo, but that may also be because the Super I may not have that many pictures for Nexus, because it kind of bombed in the ratings, so it may not have as much art assets as some of the others. Like Cosmos had a different monster in each disc. You get Amphorans on all of them. Show is across five discs. It's 37 episodes. It does not contain the two bonus episodes that were on VHS and Japanese DVDs, which I believe were just compilation specials. Uh, quote me if I'm wrong. And then on the last disc, we have Ultraman The Next, which again is a prequel. So if you're getting this set, watching Nexus, I really do recommend watching this first. It really ties a lot of the elements together. So overall, I think this is one of the better paced sets. A 37 episode show across five discs. Heck yeah. Movie all on its own? Heck yeah. That's pretty awesome. Looking at the booklet here, we've got Nexus uh, information episode guide. So here we have Nexus's uh, forms. So we got Nexus, Amphrans, uh, we got Junus, Junus Blue, and Noah. And then of course we have the Tilt organization and their weapons. Then we have the Dark, well, what I, I refer to them as the Dark uh, Ultras, but we got Dark Faust, Dark Mephisto, Dark Mephisto Zwei, and Dark Zagi. Love those guys. They're all super evil. You could have put them on discs. Uh, it, it's just, you know, looking at the art here, these would have been fine on the discs, but for whatever reason, these are the same art. I'm not going to complain too much. This set costs like $23. Uh, here's some of the kaiju, which is nice because we didn't get kaiju with uh, some of the more recent DVD sets, but maybe just because it's a shorter show. And then, of course, text descriptions for each of the episodes. And then it ends with this nice shot of uh, Nexus uh, Junus Blue. So pretty cool. Overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with this set, uh, especially in presentation, but am I happy with this set in video quality? You can hear the tone of my voice, I am. Let's take a look 
at the video quality for Nexus. This first screen cap, of course, you can see the subtitles and the font, usual stuff. And of course, the image is pretty clear. It's actually pretty sharp for being a 2005 show. This shot of Nexus is not only beautiful, but it's really well rendered. Uh, something I noticed while watching the episodes, the actual shots of the Ultraman and the Kaiju fighting are incredibly smooth to the point where it almost feels like they were shot at a higher resolution. I mean, looking at the shot of Nexus's helmet, uh, it just, it's really great. It contrasts the background. It looks really clean and sharp. And the whole episode looks like this. Uh, honestly, outside of a few moments with some VFX shots, Nexus looks pretty incredible. Now for the movie Ultraman the Next, it doesn't fare as good, I think. Uh, some composite shots like this one gets a little messy, but overall the video presentation is good. It's just... It's not Mill Creek's fault if it doesn't look as good because it's not really being compressed. A lot of shots that are just shot without VFX, like this one, can get a little fuzzy. It's a very VFX heavy movie, so sometimes the non VFX shots get a little weird looking. Overall, it doesn't look too bad. The movie does have a lot of CGI work that is done for the VFX, and that all looked pretty good for the most part. I think overall, the Next doesn't look as good as Nexus, but overall, it's a good set. You know what? I don't want to work here anymore. No, you can't quit. They didn't make Zed on Blu-ray yet? I'm underrepresented here. Okay, how long until they make Ultraman Zed on Blu-ray? We don't know. We don't even know if they have a contract for it. You can't quit over that. At least have like a good reason. I had to do the video. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the embodiment of evil put into a sword. Uh, point is, Ultraman releases are still chugging along at Mill Creek. There seems to be still a demand for them, and they seem to be selling well which is good, because I think that having a consistent release is awesome from one company. We need to do a video on Kamen Rider about how that's getting out of hand, but when it comes down to it, Ultraman is getting released by one company, and that one company is doing a decent job. There are some things out of their control. Probably Zayer's picture quality may not be their fault. Lack of booklets for some releases, those informations come from Subaraya. Lack of art on some of them? Nah, that's not really too much of an issue. These sets look great. The cover art is amazing. Some of the quality stuff comes up from the overcompression. With the sets that we looked at today, I actually don't think the compression was a problem. There's issues with Zayearth, because it's freaking Zayearth, uh, but overall the quality is good, and I can actually recommend all of these. And it's good to see that Mabius was a turning point, where I was really disappointed by Tiga Dinagaya. Mabius, Neos, Cosmos, Nexus, hopefully Max and Kids, I'm pretty happy with. So if it's going to be DVD, at least it's good DVD. And on that, I hope that we do have more Ultraman releases in the future. There is more stuff for Mill Creek to do, and I hope that we see all of that in the coming future. But for now, stay tuned for January. We'll be looking at Ultraman Max as well as Ultraman Kids. But do you want your Ultraman Max fix in the meantime? I had the chance to sit down with Sean Nichols from Ultraman Max and Ultraman Connection. I interviewed him alongside Wheelchair21, and we had a great conversation with him. Without a link in the description below, that you can also find on hero-club.com. He's a great guy, and it's always nice to hear his thoughts, because he has sort of a different perspective than some other people working in Ultraman. And he's currently trying to make Ultraman a global phenomenon with Subaraya, and that's pretty amazing. But on that note, that does it for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, leave a comment, tell me your favorite thing about these releases, or tell me something that I need to cover in a future video, because, yeah, we'll be talking about these for a while. Hit the subscribe button with the notification bell to keep up with future uploads, and also check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for Ultraman interviews, news, and more. Check out Miles and Grab Designer on Twitter at DarkClaw643, and until next time, this is Sanat saying, goodbye.